Hello, my name is Andrew Briggs, and today we are working on how to practice and perform Piatti's Caprice No. 8, the Moderato Ma Energico. So, the challenge of this Caprice is found in the opening motive, where we have a variety of articulations. So let me go ahead and play the opening of this Caprice so we can identify what they are. So, we hear that we start off with a, an initial eighth note, followed by two sixteenths, and then th followed up by a trill that swings into an eighth note. So that repeats over and over throughout the course of this caprice and really defines the character and feeling for this caprice. Today, we are going to focus on how our knees and pelvis are going to help our, support the articulation through a variety of movements. So let's begin by focusing on our right knee. Um, this knee can go ahead and extend forward and then follow it by contracting it back. So go ahead and move between the extension of the right knee and then the retraction of the same knee. And move move the knee back and forth and see what other parts of the body can help support this movement. Do you notice your heels becoming engaged to help push the knee forward and bring it back? And do you also notice that the pelvis or your hips are moving to help support this movement? Now let's go ahead and focus on the left knee and let's do that same motion. So begin to push the knee forward, extend it forward, and then bring it back and move in between the pushing forward and bringing back. And notice, again, what other body parts are helping to support the movement, but also notice, is this side more clear on how to move, or is it more difficult in this extension and contraction? And then once you feel like you have uh, become familiar with both sides, let's move between them by extending the right knee forward while the left knee is contracting back, and then reverse this motion so that while the right knee contracts back, we have the left knee pushing forward. And go ahead and move back and forth between one knee pushing forward while the other knee pulls back, and see if you can start to smooth out this movement and become familiar with it. So right now, you could become aware of how the pelvis is moving back and forth, and how the heels are also contributing to the movement of the knees by pushing, alternating pushing in. So, so what I want to do is now combine this movement with the opening of this caprice. And before we start adding in really defin definitive articulations, let's see how smooth we can play the opening with using this uh, movement. So I'm going to extend the right knee on every down bow and then I'm going to extend the left knee on every up bow and alternate that con uh, the extension and contraction that we've already established. So here's the opening very slowly and very smooth. So that was the version with the right knee extending on the down bows and the left knee extending on the up bows. Let's now reverse it again, very smooth and very slow to combine these movements. Now, between those two versions, was there one that was easier for you, or um, was there a sound quality that you preferred in one version over the other? And just notice which one you preferred to do. Let's now add in a more definitive articulation, but instead of thinking about the bow creating the articulation, let's think about the knees and the hips uh, creating the articulation. So, if I want a long first eighth note followed by a crisp sixteenths and then a smooth swing through the trill and final eighth note. Let me do that with the hips. And I'm going to switch back to the right knee extending on the down bows and the left knee extending on the up bows. 
this time with articulation, but still in a slow tempo. Notice, were you successful in creating the articulation you wanted? And also, was the, uh, the articulation driven by the hips and knees or by the bow? And again, focus on going lower into the knees and hips for the articulation. Let's reverse the movement again. Right or left knee extending on down bows, right knee extending on up bows. And same idea. <laughs> Was this version easier for you or harder and did you prefer this sound quality over the first uh, version that you played? Let's go ahead and play more in a performance tempo, again focusing on the uh, hips and knees guiding the articulation and let's just see what comes out. So, one thing to think about is your own musical interpretation. What are the articulations that you want to capture the character that you're going for? And see how you can vary the movement of the hips and knees to create that articulation. Thank you so much.